because we can still talk about feed conversion ratios and say, hey, you know what? If you don't want to torment plants, you know, best thing to do is to I, I want, plants I want directly. To Did Jeremy answer the question, anybody? No. Can plants be tormented? Jeremy Hess. <laughs> well, I mean, no brain, no central nervous system. I would argue no. Okay. Next question. Can insentient, <laughs> can insentient other animals be tormented? That I would argue there's no, I, I would never use the framing insentient other animals. I don't think it exists. I think it would be speciesist to make the claim that there's insentient other animals. Hi, I'm Jeremy from veganinteractions.com. And in this video, I'm going to talk about species hierarchy and if it's useful or not. This past Sunday, Roger and I did a live stream around this topic that was just over an hour, and I'm going to do my best to compress my thoughts around it into less than five minutes. I promise this will be shorter than my last summary video. I might have to do a summary video of the summary video. All right, so let's get into it. Bob, can we have five minutes on the clock, please? Now on Sunday, we started with a clip from the dodo, um, specifically of a rescued pig and a rescued cow, um, asking us the question if other animals see species. To me, this begs the question, if other animals don't see species, or at least not in a discriminatory way, why should we? Now more to the point of species hierarchy, we then played a clip from um, Tom Reagan, the originator of non-rhetorical animal rights, and how he responds to the question of where do you draw the line? So where that is, I'm not sure exactly, but it certainly is the case that the animals that are raised, commercially raised for, for our food, uh, cattle, sheep, hogs, those animals, chickens, certainly are above the line wherever any reasonable person would draw it. What you do about m mollusk and, and oysters and so on, I don't know. But I yeah. give them the benefit of the doubt because I have, I have no reason to eat them. We then talked about my alternative solution to this topic, and Roger gave some framing around where animal rights has been so far. This whole line drawing, like, why don't we just draw a circle around all animals, individuals worthy of respect, and then we don't have to erase it, to Reagan's point. Because that's not the criteria of animal rights. I mean, that, that's what I was saying. There is a kind of irony that um, the category animal is not the criteria of animal rights. So I find it quite interesting to contemplate that the animal rights theory doesn't actually account for all animals. I'm also wondering if the species hierarchy could be a distraction and just be very straightforward, all animals, because I think when we start, you know, getting this whole line drawing thing, and if we play that game, we're automatically inviting people to assign different value to different individuals, you know, de depending on their species membership. And I think that that's shooting well, ourselves in the foot. Plus, I think a big challenge here is animal advocates will draw the line in a different place than non-vegans. From our perspective, you know, the, the gray areas we jump to are your, your bivalves and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. However, for your average non-vegan, their gray area is, you know, a fish or even a chicken, you know? They think, oh, well, cows and pigs, but I don't know about chickens and, oh, yeah, water animals, you know, maybe, maybe not. Well, well um, I, I think that, that's that's the issue. Yeah, yeah, that's right. When thinking about how to frame our points, shouldn't we be more focused about how non-vegan may interpret those points? Plus, even if we decide that species hierarchy is a useful framework, isn't that quite likely to reinforce our own speciesism rather than to dismantle it? Well, similar to the question, questionable sentience, we could talk about questionable awareness. I, I still think we should simplify our framing, because I, I think to Ronnie's point, how, how, do you, how do we make a rational case for a species hierarchy? So the question becomes, is species hierarchy actually helping us to build the respect for our fellow animals? Well, and that, that's a key distinction between that and rights, is, is these, these, these shades, the spectrum, or, you know, as, I would, you know, as we frame this video, species hierarchy, whereas I, I personally think we should just chuck all that out. So what do you think? As an animal advocate, have you worked within the species hierarchy framework? And do you think there could actually be some benefits to rejecting it? I've been guilty of this myself as kind of working within that human superiority framework and saying, oh, no, 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 humans are better. It's just other animals matter too. Versus actually just, you know, basic moral rights level, we are equal. Like being willing to just throw, put, put that flag in the sand. Plus, I can't help but wonder if we're focusing on sentience or subject of life to use Reagan's framing, are we actually overcomplicating things? I mean, if we want to talk about a trait, why not talk about awareness? That's, that's what do you think about Ronnie's framing? 
kind of oh, putting it through. That when he says, what, what are you <laughs> <laughs> disagree with it <laughs> straight before reading it. Yeah. But yeah, the, the whole thing of, you know, it, 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 if we're talking about a human being who had the same level of awareness as other animal in question, I mean, isn't that a pretty good way to frame it versus talking about sentience or subject of a life? Also, I think it's critical to note that as animal advocates, non-vegans will oftentimes expect us to prove something when the burden of proof doesn't actually lie with us. All we have to do is create doubt. Because if we can create doubt, we can start to build a case why not err on the side of caution by simply opposing animal use. Plus, if we look at the core of this, aren't all animals basically the same or at least similar in the ways that matter? Well, and, and, and that's where I think to really strip away at our own speciesism and, and to, to really just see them as individuals in different bodies, that's where I, I would like to, to, to kind of approach some of these things. Now, obviously, when we're, we're engaging with non-vegans on the street, we have to be tactful about what's going to be translatable to them. Oh, you think? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not give it a try? We also talked about how regardless of how we frame things, people are going to come at us with these questions. So how should we respond? I think to your point earlier, I think it's good, like Reagan did in that clip, to be a bit charitable. I just think it's really important that we direct, redirect back very quickly to very obje an objective framework. So a real-life example of how this could come up in a conversation, non-vegans might come at us with, you're trying to make humans equal to animals. And I think the re simple response to that is, at a basic moral level, we are. And then we can caveat this with the whole idea that human rights is layered on top of animal rights with human specific interests in mind, such as voting or driving a car. Another question we pondered is whether or not talking about these so-called gray areas could actually help to build the case for all of our fellow animals. But it's actually talking about insects, if that is that actually, you know, so-called raises all the boats, like are we actually going to get people to think about cows, pigs, and so on in a different way if we can make a case for them? We also talked about the risk of using welfare language while making the claim for rights, or more specifically, moral rights. If we start to use language to build a case for animal rights and we start, start talking about, well, they can suffer, they can feel pain, we mm. open ourselves up to the utilitarian animal yeah, welfare paradigm alive, saying we're just reducing it. suffering because yeah. we don't want to just reduce suffering. That's not what we're about. Roger also raised an interesting point around how we often look to science to assess someone's cognitive abilities, abilities to suffer, and whether or not they're sentient. That there are some things that science is not so clear about in relation to who is and who isn't a subject of a life, or who is and who isn't sentient. That's been the criteria of the theory of animal rights. However, doesn't most of this research come from testing on our fellow animals? I mean, I personally think this comes more from uh, humanity's egos and even hubris to think we need to cut someone open or even just observe them to assess that they have moral value. I seriously question if we're genuinely pursuing morality, if we shouldn't also be following our hearts. This reminds me of the Tom Reagan quote, philosophy can lead the mind to water, but only emotion can make it drink. So a really useful trick when we're testing out these new ideas is the concept of steel manning or basically coming up with the alternatives to our points. Now I think one point in favor of species hierarchy is if we can draw a line and make the case for the individuals above that line um, for those particular species, then I think it could be said that it would be easier to make our case if we're focusing in on certain species. I could also see this being useful if someone has experience with dogs, cats, or other furry or feathery friends, and then we can help them to expand their circle of empathy. Um, this is a tactic I often use during my outreach. There's other points I think we could raise in favor of using a species hierarchy, but I'll leave it there for now. So the way I would summarize the position I would advocate for is that all animals are unique individuals who are worthy of respect, which means not breeding, using, or killing them. So what do you think? Do you think there's more to explore here? Maybe this would be an interesting um, one to frame as a debate some week. But I guess you're you're advocating for line drawing. I'm advocating for circle drawing, is, is what it sounds like is the key difference. If you'd like Roger and I to explore this more through a long-form structured debate type format, let us know in the comments. And as usual with these live streams, we also had a few laughs. But the plants aren't animals, though. That's it. That, we keep coming back to that. But I feel like I need to change this. Debates with Hessen Yates. <laughs> this is no longer a hangout. <laughs> Haven't we outgrown that? Sorry to jump in. I don't know. I mean, that's what we're going to talk about, isn't it? That's the idea. <laughs> Is that what we're doing today? <laughs>
Well, you're making I, I, an interview I, I, today. <laughs> Christian. <laughs> tell, tell him. Tell him. Just... <laughs> <laughs> you know well, what I mean? You, you choose the, the, the topic this week. <laughs> We've been on tricky territory since we started. <laughs> Pick the subject. Why? Well, I really think we should focus on on Elliot's point here. <laughs> you're just you're just looking <laughs> through us. All right. Oh, I see you. <laughs> oh, it looks like you've got one too. The 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 the, the, the it's been spread around. <laughs> Team Rudge. Team Rudge. If you found this video thought-provoking, please do consider sharing it and specifically messaging it to a fellow animal advocate because it may start some useful dialogue. Also, if you haven't already, please do consider hitting that subscribe button because beyond the anti-vegan algorithms, it helps me to know that this content is useful and I have a lot of exciting content in the pipeline. You can also follow The Animal Rights Show on Facebook or Instagram to stay in the loop for our interactive discussions that we have every Sunday as well as our team shows on Monday. Thanks for watching and for all you do for our fellow animals. We'll see you in the next one. For free resources, such as a discussion guide and language document, check out veganinteractions.com. Thanks for watching.